If you guys didn't hear, we made our first feature film. The incredibly talented Danny Gewurz wrote and directed and let me executive produce our first feature film and the trailer is out. I'm gonna show you guys a, a little tease. There is some swearing and adult themes, so maybe, maybe don't let your kids watch it, but here it is. No fucking way, dude. The boy who lived. Dude. You should come out for XC. The squad's swaggy as hell. You love them. Fellas, I'd like to introduce you to our newest teammate, Will. So why'd you try to kill yourself? He must be like seriously fucked up. I can't believe he's allowed to go to school here still. This place is going to shit. I'm Will, by the way. I'm Robin. Yeah, I know. I, I mean, I don't know. Okay. Dude, she's the girls' team captain. She's fucking crazy. Both mentally and athletically. I've been states this year. I think I peaked too early. What do you mean? I've sucked all year. It was one race. You'll get it back. Yeah. But maybe I never will. Guess I never really thought about what happens after. <laughs> Guess I just figured whatever happens. Maybe it's just a little bit better than this. Dude, what the actual oh, fuck was going on? Jesus. Do you regret it? This is a legit, full-on, significant feature film, and the whole thing is done, it's gonna come out. Go and watch the full trailer, send Danny some love because he's been <laughs> working so hard on this thing to get it done. And here is a conversation I had with Danny about everything we learned from doing our first feature film. It's long, but I think you're gonna like it. Dude! Hola, my friend. If I could, <laughs> I would give you big high fives. How does it feel? You're, you're freaking done. Does it feel like Thank <laughs> oh God. It feels so good that like nothing is changing. Like it's, it's done. done. Like <laughs> there's nothing you can do now. Like whatever happens now is like, just like Jesus take the wheel. <laughs> <laughs> do you feel relieved right now? Do you feel like, are you still stressed out? Like what what's gonna happen now? I like, I, no, like I am relieved. Like I, I am so happy that it's just like it's in the can. Like I was able to show Anna for the first time, which was like crazy because I've kind of been like hiding the whole story from her for the past two years. Has she seen anything? Like does she know anything really? Other than the trailer, no. Like <laughs> never let her read the script. Never really like talked about the story with her just because I wanted to like experience the movie for real for the first time without having like everything ruined because it's so easy. Like, uh, once you, like, get into knowing, like, all the crap we went through and, like, every little thing that we did to, like, make every single little scene happen, like, it starts to, like, take away from the magic of the movie a little bit. And I just, like, didn't want her to experience that. Once you've seen how the sausage is made, it's not the same. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, once you, once you see that, like, cow intestine casing, you're, you're good. And she, what was her response to seeing it for the first time? She, she cried her eyes out the entire time. Like, uh, I was sitting there oh, watching her just, like, out of the corner of my eye, and she's just, like, sniffling and, like, tears running down her face. And, and once, like, I saw that, I was like, all right, whatever happens now, I could care less. I mean, the most important person in my life, like, really loved it and enjoyed it. And, like, what's the point of doing this if, like, that's not the end goal? A hundred percent. Yeah, that's such a good reaction. I haven't watched the final final right now. I, I, <laughs> I've decided crazy. I'm going to watch it at the Philly screening because I, I kind of nice. want like a, a cool experience. I don't want to just watch it by myself, you know, somewhere or whatever. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It'll be so much fun having like the energy from the crowd. Like every joke, like everyone laughing together in unison, like people crying in unison. Like it's such a different exactly. experience. What is this? What's your first feature about? Do you want, do you want me to read the the synopsis. Sure, yeah. <laughs> After an attempted suicide and his only regret being that he's still alive, Will must redo his senior year, feeling like an outsider as school gossip circulates. Struggling for significance, he haphazardly joins the school's cross-country team, where he meets Robin, the girls' team captain who is unusually interested in Will's past. So that's like what we we like submit to like festivals yeah, yeah, and, yeah. and stuff. It's like, yeah. <laughs> it's like, how can we like vaguely put this? <laughs> <laughs> It's hard. Yeah, but, but 
Yeah, but like in, in like a more like casual general sense, it's it's two people struggling with different mental illnesses that lead them to suicide suicidal ideations and kind of examines the relationship and and how being in a relationship with those affects the two of them and like just like being a young person trapped in your tight square of high school life um so it, it's like really emotional but at the same time it's super funny like there's so much comedy in here it's high school it's cross-country kids who are just like always going to be the goofiest kids at your high school so there's just yeah. like so many so much room for jokes and whatnot but at a certain point the film is like wow this where the jokes go like this is like so <laughs> serious <laughs> like, which I, I i love it's just like who i am <laughs> and i always say um a movie needs contrast and these feelings too yeah. like if it's just heavy and dark and whatever it it does it, you don't get the same like emotions whereas when you have the contrast yeah. between like you're laughing and then you're like oh like this is serious like both yeah. feel, like you get the highs and lows and both feel way more drastic in that it, it, when you have both yeah. of them together yeah exactly and it, it almost like it punches so much harder too and everyone just like lifts their guard yeah with the comedy and all of a sudden everyone's just like organs are exposed for a nice gut punch. <laughs> So it's all about just like getting people laughing, feeling comfortable, and then making them feel really vulnerable. So this was your first feature film. You wrote it, directed, and it's my <laughs> first time being in, in a different, like, it's like I, I, I'm in a different role, but this is our first feature film. And I thought it would yeah. be fun to share to the audience, like, what the heck did we learn from doing our first feature film? Because yeah. we learned a lot. Yeah. Boy, oh, oh, oh. We, we learned a heck of a lot through this experience. We learned a little bit. <laughs> Neither of us went to film school. And, and, like, not saying we needed film school, but, like, this this was, like, the greatest film school I could have ever asked for. Like, I learned so much about every single aspect of this project from, from just writing that first line through still now, like, trying to enter into festivals and, like, trying to find a distributor. And, like, it's just never ending. Like, two years ago, this started. And I feel like I feel like I've aged a hundred years of wisdom <laughs> yeah. in those two years. <laughs> yeah, I don't think there's any faster way to like move ahead in your career than to step into something like this that's just so all encompassing. Yeah. And then there's just there's so many levels to this. It's not just like, hey, let's make something look cool. Like there's so many <laughs> levels to like actually getting this done and then yeah. getting it out to the like out to the world. Like, what are some of the main things? Um, you've learned through this experience? I mean, I think the first one that we got to touch on is just who you're surrounding yourself with on this project yeah. and making sure that the people that you are surrounding yourself with uh, are people that you really genuinely love to work with because it's such a long project. It's years that you're you're communicating with the same people every single day in and out you're gonna get in like little arguments and bicker about things and if there's not like this foundational relationship yep. like that can fall apart really quickly and I learned that you know through like really good relationships that we were able to have through this experience and ones that ended up not working out because there wasn't that foundation that we we had worked together previously on other projects so so really really like feeling like you can like full heartedly fall back on the people that you're going to spend years <laughs> of your life with on a single thing. And I think most people would caught up, get caught up here, like thinking you, you give this advice. They're like, oh, I have to find the best people, like the be most talented. And that's not necessarily the thing. Yeah. Like, I, I don't think we have, I don't think any of us on this project were the most talented <laughs> in any of our areas, like no. at all. <laughs> but like, I think you, you had such a good team working for you and like Definitely. having fun on set and like when things get real stressful and keeping it lighthearted as much as possible and not just like just ripping on each other, man, that makes the whole like the whole experience better. But that in turn makes the movie better. Yeah. If you can't get along, yeah. then I, I, I almost feel like you can't really make a good movie. Yeah, it, there's got to be that level of passion from every single person that's on your team, which is, I guess, like another thing you learn. Yeah. Like, you have to be extremely passionate about this project 
because it is so hard to get to the finish <laughs> line. Like every single ounce of you is going to tell you to stop. And if it's not something that you yeah. wholeheartedly believe in, it's not going to get there because you're going to give up because I mean, even how much I believed in this project and like how much others believed in this project, like there was times where it was, it was looking dark <laughs> <laughs> and things were, weren't looking like it was going to work out. I feel like one of my roles was to just be like, you got this, Danny. Keep going. Keep going. This is going <laughs> to end. It's not going to last forever. Like, we just have to push through this. And like, obviously, you're doing way more on the ground work for this. And like, but like, that was one of my roles. I felt like just like. You got this. And being on set, just like, just being there for you, whatever, you know, like, you know, being that like, kind of like, you can talk to me, you know? I can't, I can't tell you how important just like little words of encouragement through even text from Mm. you were like you, someone so influential in my life, starting out as a a filmmaker and having you believe in me and this project. And even after you've seen like uh, how the sausage (laughs) was made, even like after you've seen like bits and pieces of the projects, you're still like full heartedly, like showing that passion and encouragement. And and that, that stuff goes such a long way when you are feeling so like down and and anxious about what you're creating. Yeah. And, and everybody will feel defeated at some point. And it's just a matter of like keeping going, keep going, like one (laughs) step forward, like defeat after defeat, (laughs) then there's some wins and then there's defeat. You just got to keep going, going, you know? Another thing that I think is so important when you're, you're at this indie level where the budgets aren't millions of dollars is you have to simplify everything. Like it, you can't, you have a smaller crew than you're supposed to have. You have less money than you're supposed to have. You have less gear. You have to, from the foundation of the story, create something that is, is very contained. Mm-hmm. Like you can't get outside the box. You can't have huge action scenes. You have to create scenes that are just simple but powerful in a way. And don't let those scenes get out of hand. If if you only have so much time to shoot something during the day and you're shooting seven, eight scenes a day, you don't have time for the crazy boom shot movements or anything. You have to find a way to like find really simple compositions, lock off the camera, get your coverage and move on. Yeah. So so simplifying everything from from the story down to what you actually shot. It's almost it's like you want to be efficient in everything, but you also want to be efficient in the storytelling. You don't want to waste time exactly. telling like you just want to yeah. You know, whatever the it's most TV show. Yeah, exactly. You, know? you don't have time. So yeah. g- get to the point, whatever the best way is. And even just watching you work like uh, that one day with outdoor scenes on the on the field, like you had all these different <laughs> shots that you want to do. And then it was just like, oh, we're doing a oneer. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it was more <laughs> yeah. efficient to just do it that way at the moment. You know? Yep. It, it worked. It looked pretty. I was like, all right, this is better. Getting this done right now while the sun is right is better than trying to get everything I thought I needed yeah. and then losing light and having all these other issues arise. One of the things that I I feel like this this sounds probably weird and I don't even know how you're going to think when I say it, but I almost feel like um, with a project like this, artistry comes second to like coordination and logistics. Absolutely. Like yeah. the, that has to be the logistics and coordination has to be on point. And then it leaves room for artistry. But if if you're yeah. if you're not coordinated, if logistics are all out of whack, there's no room for artistry. Yeah, absolutely. It's, there's so many moving pieces throughout this entire thing, from actors, schedules, locations, weather, you know, gear, whatever it is. Like I felt like at the beginning, I focused so hard on the creative, making sure the story was ready to go. And then when we went to production. I just had to rely on whatever I did (laughs) back then. And we just had to like figure out like the coordination of how this was all going to work. It it was such, it's just like a big like supply chain management at at some point. Like, yeah, it feels like you're not even like being a creative and you're just doing like logistical stuff at a certain point. But then again, like when you, you have all this and you're able to sit down in the edit you're able to be like, all right, now I can start working creatively again and like fixing whatever logistical issues yeah. didn't work out. <laughs> exactly. Uh, if anybody is hearing, um, it's like a crazy rainstorm out here and got real moody in here for a second. Another another big one for me was learning to stick to my gut. Like, you know, I wrote the story. Like I have 
no one really knows what's in your inside your head but you Mm -hmm. and you're the director and like everyone just kind of needs to like listen to you and i think too many times i ran into situations where i kind of felt insecure because it was my first time directing something that i kind of like gave in to a suggestion that like maybe wasn't the right fit for the project it's obviously great to take suggestions but at Mm -hmm. a certain point like if in your gut you know that what you think is the right way to go you have to stick with that yeah um like when i got into the edit there were so many things where i'm like oh i wish i just stuck to that like i would rather die on my own sword yeah and have it be my own fault than you know i listen to someone else <laughs> and it ended up not working out it's funny like a lot of times i'd give you like a uh, like i said from the beginning I, I will have no like creative <laughs> control but i'd give you little suggestions and usually like i already tried that like you know I, i'm gonna you know, it was always like the answer was more like i'm gonna stick with my gut here like i've already yeah. like kind of like tried the different and that that i think that's so sick uh but, but there are so many things that come up where you're like oh yeah that's a great idea yeah 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 yeah, yeah. oh for sure yeah, and that'll be very clear but if you're like on the fence of whether you should change something or not like you're probably better off just going with Like having the one person's mind vision making that decision. I'm curious, how many times throughout this have you thought to yourself, like, I'm a hack. I have no idea what I'm doing. Like, I don't even think I'm (laughs) good at filmmaking. Before we got on the call. (laughs) It's like a a daily occurrence that that I feel that way. You know, this is my first time ever writing and directing a narrative project. Like, I never did a short narrative like, yeah, I did, like, little commercials that are, like, three minutes long that, like, had narrative elements to them. But I've never shot, like, dialogue. <laughs> like, I like I had no idea if I was capable of, like, doing this. And when I sat down to edit, I'm like, oh, my God. Like, how do I piece together a dialogue conversation? Like, does this even work? Like, showing people for the first time. And, like, <laughs> it's just, like, every step of the way, like, I was throwing myself into the fire and just thinking, like, this isn't going to happen. Like... I'm, I'm, I'm not the person to, like, be successful at this. Like, yeah. why me? Like, why, why would I be successful? But, I don't know, I guess it just, like, starts to work out. Yeah. <laughs> like, seeing people's reactions to who have seen it so far, like, it's it's been, like, overwhelmingly, mostly positive, yeah. great stuff uh, of, about the movie. And I, I think that definitely subsides yeah. some of that anxiety that I'm feeling. I think everybody gets that at every level. And I think people Absolutely. people will watch this film and they'll be like, of course Danny could make this. Danny's so talented. <laughs> and they'll, like, it's really hard to, to understand. Like you're saying, like you're doing these for, for the first time ever. It's not like <laughs> you've had all this experience. You were fully prepared and ready to go. I got this. It's just like, <laughs> all right, let's figure this out. I had an idea, you know? Yeah, there there is nothing like, like being the leader of 50 people around and having to make this clear-cut decision of what needs to show up on that frame. Yeah. And like having it work out, it is so hard to visualize in that moment with so many people looking at you. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like I, I can't even express like how hard this thing is. <laughs> like, <laughs> and, and then like even watching back the movie, like I have learned so much about just like being able to visualize shots and like what works and what doesn't work. Yeah. That I know like the next time I do this, it's gonna be hundred times easier to to just like be able to visualize what i'm writing yeah um at this point i'm gonna say everything takes a hundred times longer than you think it's a, <laughs> yeah. i think i think like obviously we're noobs at this but and we know everything takes <laughs> longer but you have to like you literally have to just like overestimate everything like being on yeah. shoot you guys are just like it's con- it's a constant battle of like letting go of things just because we're overestimating yeah. how much we can do and they're like well we're not going to be able to get those shots and we're not going to be able to and like had you been able to better like understand like we're not going to be able to get everything overestimate how long everything's going to take what are the 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 main things only i think that that would really help and like just take the stress off on on the shoot days that like i don't have to get it okay we have some like bonus things that we'd like to get but like 
these are the must-haves. Let's go for the must-haves and then, like, you know, go for the bonuses after that. Absolutely. I, that was every day yeah. during production. Like, all right, we, we don't have time for one of these scenes. What are we cutting? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or, like, how can, how can we take this 10... 10 shot scene and turn it into one shot. <laughs> yeah. 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 That's just yeah. that's and that's part of the movie magic is just figuring it out on the fly. <laughs> yeah, and, and at the end of the day, like the audience who's watching that, they have no idea that that's happening. They just assume that whatever they're watching was the how it was supposed to end up, right? So every movie ever has done that, I bet. Like they, <laughs> yeah. they just you just don't have infinite time and resources. What was it like mm-hmm. for the first time working with real actors and and also non-actor actors? Is that the right way to like people that haven't really yeah. acted before <laughs> but are now actors? What was it like working with actors? Yeah, I, that was one of the biggest fears I had going into the film. Like, would I be able to c- communicate effectively with the actors because the actors are. Arguably the most important part of this film. Mm. Like, uh, the people aren't watching me and you on the screen. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, they're watching the actors. They are the movie. Like, whatever their faces or wh- however they act and the choices that they decide to make while they're acting, that's what the outcome of the movie is. And their performances are everything. So, so making sure that I was getting my direction across clearly to them, I... I, I read books I like listened to podcasts and like how to direct uh, actors and ultimately all that just went away and you just end up building really beautiful relationships with these people that you're directing because they they full heartedly end up trusting their director if you show them like love and support and, and like understand how vulnerable they're being for you uh, it, so I was able to develop just like the best relationships with with our lead actors. Uh, so we kind of got in a flow where they just like understood what I wanted mm-hmm. at a certain point, and, and uh, like I could trust them on those decisions that they were going to make because those characters became their characters at a certain point. Yeah, like uh, you know, Connor Connor was Will, mm-hmm. and whatever he felt like Will would have done in that moment I just trusted yeah a lot of what he was doing um, and then we had like a lot of non-actors like we had a very experienced people like Connor and Tia who's a lead oh, is her first time she's acting so a, good yeah she's phenomenal she's phenomenal mm-hmm. I was able to watch it with her last night and, and being able to like witness her see herself in this format for the first time was such a cool experience yeah like no one would have ever suspected that she had never done this before and, no. and she feels like a real person. Yeah. Because she is a real person. Yeah. Um, don't don't get so me wrong. Many so many people were very talented, but because she was a non-actor, I was just like blown away yeah. that like, what the heck? She's like <laughs> yeah. really, really good. Uh, uh, yeah, Connor, yeah, everybody's yeah. super good. But yeah, even our even our day players, like our little one-off characters, like everyone was great. Yeah. At it. And we spent a lot of time like making sure we were getting that right in casting. Yeah. Like I looked over so many self-tapes. Yeah. Just like trying to get the perfect people for every role, which is not always easy for an indie film. Yeah, but there are a lot of really talented people out there. Uh, on set, I could tell that the relationship you had with each of the actors was genuine, and yeah. that's why there was that trust between you guys. If it wasn't genuine, yeah. I don't think a lot of people that are outside, you know, haven't been part of this, realize how much you're asking of the actors. Like some of the scenes are yeah. like they're serious scenes. They like emotionally, yeah. physically take a big toll from on the actors and like to be able to ask yeah. them to do some of these things is like it's not easy mm-hmm. and like because you were friends with them you had a close relationship with them yeah you were able to get these uh like performances that i don't think would have come out if if you were just kind of like uh you know standoffish whatever like i don't really know yeah. them whatever you spend so much time with them before you get the set talking about their character talking about their story making sure that they're gonna be okay after they play this character like they are mm-hmm. transforming themselves into these people and uh, like a lot of this movie is a lot about mental health and mental illness and having to portray that and feel that can do a lot of damage to their actual person. So we spent a lot of time like making sure they're going to be okay yeah. 
during that time and even after the movie once we all left it wasn't just like all right thanks for your thanks for your work here see you later yeah, <laughs> yeah. like we had like a, a mental health consultant who, who could talk to them and be there for them i'm here for them always so yeah yeah just having that that like friendship and support i, th- I think just like made it so much more real when you watch the film like everyone's gonna fall in love with our leads like yeah. it's undeniable yeah like they are the best part of this film mm-hmm. and yeah. i'm so happy with everything they did yeah. for me personally i forgot how much i love being on set and how much I, l- I just learn from watching other people work. And so, like, that was a big thing for me that I learned, like, whatever future films I do in the future, like, I want to be on set as much as possible. This one, logistically, it, it all happened so fast. Yeah. And, like, with kids, it was, like, yeah. it was so hard to get there and be there for a long... But, man, I want to be there, like... And, and even just, like, even if I'm just the executive producer, I could tell I was playing a role, even if it's just for you to be there, yeah. to be somebody that like isn't, isn't you know, kind of like working for you, that somebody you can actually just like really vent out to and really like talk totally. about the higher, higher level stuff, like what's happening without disturbing the crew and like ruining morale <laughs> and all of that stuff, you know? It's so, it sounds so stupid and cliche to be like, oh, you become a family, but like, it does. <laughs> yeah. Like you, you go through so much crap with these people day in, day out. Yeah. S- you know, filming to to four a.m. every night, then having like ridiculous, ridiculously quick turnaround times. Yeah. Everyone's exhausted, and in, in, in those like struggle moments is when you like really like bond with each other. <laughs> yeah. What what I would like, I was jealous of this. How I would describe it is like you're at summer camp and you've been hanging out for the whole week, and then I came in <laughs> on like the second to last day, and then like. Everybody's like, you know, having. I'm like, I don't really know any. You know, like I felt like a bit of a. <laughs> yeah. I want to be there and yeah. I want to experience summer <laughs> camp. You know, no, I will say it was like when I saw you and Tyler come down that hill. It just like revamped like all the energy that I needed to like get through that week. It was so fun because like you guys have, have yeah. been with me on this from from day one, and like even before the concept of the movie came to be. Like yeah. you guys were like helping me with my YouTube channel and kind of like pushing me to go to YouTube full time and helping me find success in that. So just being able to share like what we were doing together, like in real life, because we don't always get to hang out in real life because, you know, you live in Canada. Yeah. (laughs) I live, (laughs) you know. In, in, which isn't that far. It's like it's eight not hours that far, but, but still, you know, yeah. be, just just any time we get to like actually be together in real life, just like yeah, it feels like a, a dream for me, you know. Yeah, and I gotta say, like I've said it before, but I'm so incredibly proud of you and the team and us and what we've been able to like do. I think I think a lot of people will be even shocked at like what we were able to create with so little. Yeah. And I think just as like. Oh, they're just YouTubers. Like, I think that is already, yeah. you know, like... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, that's, like, so far away, like, of how... Like, this movie is so much better than, like, even, like, that suggestion yeah. <laughs> of, like, YouTubers making a movie. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> At this point, like, like, I know this movie is not perfect, right? It's never going to be, mm. like, ever. Like, especially, like, how, like, what budget we had. Like, we couldn't just throw money at the wall. Yeah. And we just, like, at a certain point just had to get it done versus perfecting it. Yeah. But I do, like, I look around and I watch other movies, like, what are on these, like, big streaming sites. And I, I'm, i like, pretty self-aware, and I, like, in most aspects of my life. And I'm sitting there, like, our movie is good. Mm-hmm. Like, we have a great, yeah. high-quality product that is so relevant to so many people. Mm-hmm. It, and... It, the cinematography is so well done. So good. The edit is great. The so music good. is great. Like, like, this is a real complete film. Yeah. That I, I think, like, like, people are going to take it seriously. Like, it's not like... Yeah. <laughs> it's, not, it's not like people are going to show up and, and be like, like cringing the entire time or whatever. <laughs> or, like you're gonna sit down and you're gonna watch a movie. <laughs> yeah, I, I think a lot of people that might expect that, like, oh, good for you, YouTubers. You guys made a few. Exactly, good for yeah. you guys. Like, kind of like you guys yeah, are like, like, <laughs> like, just be proud that you got yeah, through it. Just, got done. <laughs> no, it's like so much more no, than that. I was which li- is so cool. I literally watched like some like 
big Hollywood names in a movie on the plane just last week. And I was like, this isn't that good. Like, and compared to yeah. what we created was so little. And I'm not, yeah. I'm not saying that we're better than any. I just think that it worked out. We, I think we got yeah. lucky in many ways and we yeah. pushed through and we cared about this project. And I think that's why it ended up being, it's not perfect. Nobody's saying it's perfect, but it's no, really good. <laughs> yeah. uh, the only question I have for you now is, are you going to do this again? <laughs> Probably eventually. <laughs> <laughs> I already have like I already have like a hundred ideas written down like in my notebook like I like write little scenes here and there, but but definitely like need a break from this. Yeah, <laughs> both both mentally and financially. It is intense. <laughs> uh, it yeah, is. I can't wait to uh, come hang out, be at the Philly screening, and uh, can't wait. Uh, yeah. there's still some screening spots left. We have a bunch. Yeah, there is. There the numbers are dwindling, but I think I think there's like. 30 to 40 spots in in each city other than Philly. Philly's completely booked. If you want to come and hang out with us and you're in that city on that date and want to watch it with me, <laughs> Maddie. Heck yeah. <laughs> like some of the actors will be around. Like come through. Like how often do you get to watch a movie with like the people that are in it and made it? I think that's such a cool experience. Yeah. Personally. Dude, but. thanks so much for uh, letting me par- be a part of this journey. I, I, I loved every bit of it. Even though it was so many headaches and so much you. crazy this stuff. This thing literally doesn't get made. <laughs> this movie does not get made without Maddie. <laughs> like, yeah, but still. Like, I, I feel like I have like a guardian angel in Maddie. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so lucky. Like, it's unbelievable. Like, uh, nobody like at my age gets to make their first feature the way they want. Um, yeah. And I just feel so lucky that, I, you know, I, I have you in my corner yeah. uh, to help make this happen. So so hopefully, like, I, I, I know you're proud of it, which makes me mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> feel so relieved and I'm, I'm so happy. And I, I just, like, I hope, like, this leads to more doors and, like, more money for us to make another one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is that would be yeah. uh, if we make our money back. That is incredible. If we make more money yeah. to make the next feature film, holy crap, like, this yeah. is a dream. Like, and I think that's actually yeah. possible. I th- I'm like, I have high hopes. A lot of this, too, is just, like, showing people that we can do it, right? Yeah. Like, a, a studio who has all the resources and money looking for filmmakers to make their thing. Mm-hmm. Like, we have... Like the greatest proof of concept yeah, ever. Exactly. Like, we have a movie that says that, hey, we can do this. Yeah. Like, and look how look what we can do with so little. So. You know what's weird? I I've especially when I went down the YouTuber route, I was like, well, the dream of like getting like an Oscar or something like that, that's gone. Like, and that's okay. I was okay with that. But this yeah. whole process, the 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 finished product. Now it yeah. doesn't seem crazy at all. Like now it's like, oh, oh, yeah. it's right there. Like it's just a few steps ahead and it's there. Like, you know, yeah, that's yeah. Lot, like that's mm-hmm. crazy to me. You know, I did. I didn't expect that I, yeah. I, as much as I trusted you and as much as I like, you know, thought you're super talented. I still didn't think that it would be like, oh, OK, it's just like if we just keep going, it's it's right there. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Like it's definitely like obviously it's not this one. Like This one's not winning an Oscar. <laughs> But, but like the fifth one, like yeah, <laughs> the second one, yeah. the third one, like yeah, I, I would have not yeah. like I would uh, honestly, I I really think we've moved into this like new new like slightly different way of doing things, and I th- I think it's I gonna pay off yeah. huge. I think again, it's just we we keep going. We have like people like hundreds of thousands of people dying to watch the movie already because yeah. they've watched the behind the scenes, they know the characters, they've been following along for mm-hmm. so long and it's such a unique experience Yeah, for a movie. Like so often you go in blind and it takes you like 30 minutes to kind of like get in the, like the vibe of the movie and like know the characters. But like so many people are going into this like, like, I love yeah, Connor like already exactly. and like yeah. like they like love yeah. they like loved our DP like <laughs> yeah like your BTS episodes this whole series has been so good like like it's such a good learning experience not just for you but for all of us just seeing like what you're going through and what you're doing and like all of the decisions and all of that stuff like it's been really yeah. fun to to watch yeah it's been cool I can't wait to like look back on those too yeah like five years from now and yeah. just be like, actually be able to enjoy yeah, it. Yeah. <laughs> it's 
it's gonna take a little thing while. After all this, yeah, after all the scarring has <laughs> <Yeah>. gone away. <laughs> all right, cool, man. I will see you in Philly, and then if you guys are gonna come, uh, maybe I'll see you guys in Philly or one of the other spots. Yeah, or Toronto. Toronto. You'll be in Toronto. Toronto for sure. I can't wait for Toronto. That's gonna be I good. can't wait to. I want to. I can't wait to see your studio. I want to come in and like be in Maddie's space. It's crazy <laughs> to me that you haven't. Been, in my mind, I'm like, oh, of course you've been here, but you haven't even been yeah. here. You know? no. haven't even like. <laughs> yeah, I'm. I'm taking your one wheel. I'm riding oh, it all over the office. Oh, we are going one wheeling for sure. <laughs> yeah, I'm going into that little town that you're in and just like one wheeling down the street. It's right there. <laughs> I eat shit and break my camera <laughs> yeah, again. <I'm> done. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. All right, man. See you in Philly. Yep. Love you.